and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert. It's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual. So here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'm looking at you, Alex. Ooh, Yay! We're in the same room. We're, we're in... a foot apart. It's great. I love being so near you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hanging at the... Uh, Wonderful library in downtown Vancouver. I found myself by chance up here in town anyway, so we decided to just get together, and it's so nice. It's so nice. We're in a special room. We're going to post pictures of the room we're in. It's like an actual conference room with, like, tables. Way more space than we need. (laughs) Oh, yeah, way more space than the the traditional closet that we have been known to record in. Actually, I've started recording under my desk in my bedroom, so... (laughs) See, my bedroom has enough junk in it that there's no echo, so I can record from my bed, but I've also been recording from upstairs on a little desk, because that's nice, too. Yeah, yeah, the reason, I like, my room is pretty full, but, like, down under my, it's, like, right beside my bed, and, like, between the wall, and my, and so it's, like, a nice little, <laughs> it doesn't, it's not quite as uncomfortable as it sounds, <laughs> but... What's new to you, Alex? Um, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm going through like a little roller coaster. Yes. But I don't want to really talk about it because I don't know. Today's been been good. So. Yeah, we don't need to dwell on that right yeah. now. So we'll talk about the noise that my computer is going to make when it when it dies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in like a minute or two. Yeah, so listen for that <laughs> listen at for home. That. Um, but also, <laughs> um, I've been doing writing as usual, yes. um, which is good to, that it's usual and it's exciting and. A new book, hopefully. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping it gets accepted soon. <laughs> I hope so too, because I love it. Oh my goodness, it's so I'm so excited about it. Me too, me too. It's just I'm yeah, it's got it's so good. Somebody's definitely gonna want it because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, I went out and I saw Annihilation. <gasps> So I know that you were like on the fence and you were worried. really curious. You were wor- okay. So basically, we were hanging out having coffee earlier. So we were already a bit warmed up in the conversation. <laughs> We've um, already talked about eight different movies. <laughs> yes. So I held off on this one. So based on our conversation, I I have a feeling it would upset you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was very good. It was okay. honestly one of the best movies I've seen like in a really long time. I know that there was somebody you were talking to on Twitter or something that said it wasn't very good. I think probably people are just really mixed about it just because it's so... It's, I mean, it's... So much going on. I understand that it's not for everyone, honestly, because the what was really amazing to me about it is how sort of existentially terrifying it is. See, I like the idea of that. I cannot handle actually experiencing that. It was, it was, <laughs> like... I don't want to tell you anything yeah. about it unless you're like, I'm oh. definitely not going to see it. I mean, I would love, I'll probably end up watching like, um, what's that um, YouTube show? It's not bad, not trailer, the trailer's one, it's um, Everything Wrong With. Oh. I'll probably end up watching one of those because it like breaks it down where you don't have to actually like intake it. Yeah, I mean, I will say that will just kill the movie. But. I know, but like, <laughs> I, I just know myself, like everybody... Akira is like one of the most acclaimed movies of all time, and like I could not handle. Like I sat oh, there and this is, it and I was like wrecked. Okay, because like the body horror and stuff, like the sort of grossness of it, I would say is honestly, yes. it's on par with like Hannibal. Okay, so that's not too bad. But existentially, see that I don't, that I don't even have an example for, it, and I know it's gonna freak. Me I mean, out, like so. I would say it's <laughs> like if. Uh, Interstellar was made by John Carpenter. Okay. That's what we're talking here. Well, then maybe I don't know. I don't we'll know. See. Like it's, but it's like the best sci-fi horror movie I think that has been made since Alien. Okay. It's, and it's because awesome, it's all female driven, yeah. and it's so good, and it's so, it's I'm like I I I had to start reading the book that it's based on, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, like the night that I saw the movie because I was just still reeling from it. It, very different honestly it's very very different like it's it's equally good mm-hmm. but it's it's a pretty separate thing yeah i just existential anything anything <sighs> where it starts to talk about like the size uh, of the universe and like our place in it that gets a little it's, horrifying it's like me. well okay because so you don't think you're gonna be able to watch it i mean i might watch it one day um until i 
like if, if I can find it streaming, then I'll just probably watch it until I can't watch it anymore. Okay. Yeah. If you want to ruin it, I don't mind. You don't mind? Okay. Because I just, I just, I just, oh, I mean, basically <laughs> what it's, what the, the sort of existential horror of it is, is that, um, so the, you know, the sort of, I mean, the shimmer far, or as far as you can know from the trailer. Yeah. It's like this area that there's this strange phenomenon happening there. Um, it's been impacted by some sort of extraterrestrial object mm -hmm. and it's been growing outward from that point. The lead character is um, a basically a cancer doctor. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of the comparison to what is happening in the shimmer is it's compared to cancer in that it's not actually, it's not a disease per se. It's not killing anything. It just keeps growing and mm -hmm. changing and mutating. And everything is sort of, it's, like sharing and trading mm -hmm. DNA and like, so everything's sort of combining and mixing. It's like a kaleidoscope of life. And it's, <sighs> this scene, this scene, it's one of the most dreadfully scary things I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And I loved every moment of it. Uh, they get attacked by this creature, which seems to be some sort of bear. You mm -hmm. don't see it very well, but one of the members of the party gets dragged off by it and killed off screen. Later, this oh no. bear comes back, but it has somehow through this process fused with this woman oh. in some way. You just hear it at first, and it sounds like this woman's voice screaming, help me, oh help me, but that is just the bear's yeah. voice oh, God. and it's her voice screaming through this bear <laughs> oh. and so like one of them like runs off it's like it's her it's her we have to help her she's still oh. alive and then this bear is here and his face is like a skull it's yeah. so bad and it's the most horrific like this scene with this bear coming after getting them it's like it was the most intense terrifying thing i've ever seen after the scene got over my brother and i just turned to each other with like mouths agape <laughs> just like what the fuck was that? Like, it was, it blew my mind. And then, like, and that's to say nothing of the ending. Yeah, like, yeah. I will say, every sort of frightening moment in this film just steps it up from the oh last. It builds and builds and builds so expertly. This movie is incredible. And I get why people wouldn't, it wouldn't click for some. Yeah. But I think it was revelatory like, for me. Like, it's a defining addition to the science fiction genre. It's wow. so good. So that's that's what's been on my mind. <laughs> it's really incredible. And and uh, Natalie Portman knocks it out of the park. She's very, very good. Good to know, good to know. Yeah, it was, it was whew, a lot. Like I was mulling for days. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> but it's really It sounds really interesting and really good, but the mulling for days part is where I, I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's really very frightening. Like, I thought, honestly, for my money, it was scarier than It. Oh, wow. And I loved It. <laughs> so that's another Blu-ray I need to buy. They just keep making movies. Just real good ones lately. I know. And they keep making books and they keep making it all. I feel like it's been a good time for movies lately. A lot yeah. of good stuff coming out. They've been doing oh, good yeah. work. Especially because like a few years ago, I feel like there was just a lot of garbage coming out. It's a lot of the same. Yeah. A lot of the same. Yeah, there's a lot fresher. They're really taking it. And honestly, I think it's because of Marvel sort of handing off certain projects to um, lesser known directors. I think it maybe even started with Avengers given to Joss Whedon, taking mm -hmm. a chance on him. and He blew it up. Mm -hmm. And so then people are like, oh, maybe we do need to get fresh creative people in making big important things yeah. and they're given way more room to do that than I think they had been in the system that was going on at the time. Well and then based on what has happened this year alone it's only gonna you know, mm -hmm. go from there with mm -hmm. Black Panther and with uh, Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah and then just you know the end of last year with Thor Ragnarok yeah. and I literally want Taika Waititi to direct everything. Everything. And be in everything. Yeah. And I just want to watch the behind the scenes. Apparently there's a really good moment in the director's commentary where um, Thor and Hulk are in, their, in the arena and Taika's daughter walks in during the recording of the... <laughs> so apparently, you know, look out for that. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's adorable. Oh, boy. I haven't listened to that yet, but I, I want to... And I'm also really excited to see the deleted scenes for Star Wars. 
Yeah, that's got to be interesting. That's another DVD I need to buy. Oh, Blu-ray. I like. I'm still calling them DVDs, well, but I don't want to. My my goal is always to get the Blu-ray DVD combo, just in case I need to loan something out, or just in case my whole life gets downgraded somehow. <laughs> you lose everything. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, I'd need like a 4K Blu-ray DVD VHS cassette combo pack. Sure, everything. Uh, laser disc. <laughs> laser disc. Of oh. course. <laughs> The only Laserdisc movie I've ever watched was Twister, and I think that's the only movie you ever need to see on Laserdisc. I mean, if you need to at all. <laughs> Actually, I, I had. Do you remember? I don't know if you ever knew Jim Lortz at Western. Mm-mm. He was um, he was a theater professor, no. really wonderful dude. Um, but he um, oh, there goes my phone. I should silence it. <laughs> uh, he is just a wonderful, funny old man, and he is just huge into laser discs. And I don't know why. <laughs> like he was it's, like it's his favorite technology is laser discs, and he like collects. Well, they're them. like I think part of it's their size is what makes they're them so like, funky. They're like. I don't know. It's like this strange artifact, and it was only around for a couple of years. So I think that was like I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was this weird sort of liminal, like a a, a liminal media. There, Mm -hmm. it was weird. A weird moment in Betamax too. Just sort of like this weird (laughs) sort of, and I guess HD DVD as well. Oh, just these failed media formats. HD DVD was literally the same thing as Blu-ray, just with a different name. And well, but and well. and they just and they're not compatible, so it's like yeah. no nope, HD DVD died. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-mm. and it's because of Sony. Sony was like, let's make PlayStation 3's Blu-ray players, and that did, well, that in porn. Yeah. Apparently, the porn industry favored right. Blu-ray, mm-hmm. <laughs> like well, for real. <laughs> like the name doesn't make as much sense, but it's easier to say. Yeah, it's less of a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit snappier. But, and it's like HD DVD. It's like this it's is already so many an acronym. Ds. Like, we don't need to make it an extra acronym. Yeah, it's not fun to and say. Like the only reason an acronym should that be that long is if you can actually pronounce it, like scuba or laser. Sure. Know? Yeah, it's just a lot. So you sorry, HD DVD. Yeah, you didn't. You, <laughs> you, you, you didn't. Have, you lost the vowel game. You shat the bed on that one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of. Blu-rays and things that have just come out. Yes. Today, we're talking about Coco. I really need, like, a sound effect. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, yeah, we need, like, a soundboard thing <laughs> to, like... You know, Justin McElroy got one of those, and he used it for one episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and didn't ever again, and I wish he would bring that back, because I thought that was a very fun addition to the show. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. So, apparently, like, nobody saw Coco in the theater. I know... Like as an like overall audience, because I know like everybody I know on Twitter was like seeing it and loving it. Really? Yeah. At the time, okay. Because I feel like maybe not at the time, but across like since it came out to like seeing it at um, three dollar theaters and Uh, because yeah, just the marketing was kind of bad for Coco. Like I saw nothing. I think part of it is the age range that it's not necessarily targeted for, but like I think that would get the most out of it is a little older than Pixar's normal sort of range. Mm-hmm. And then also it doesn't look as much like a Pixar movie. It looks a little bit more like a Dream- DreamWorks or a Disney animation rather than a Pixar. Mm-hmm. Um, Fair. But since they're such the same entity almost at this point. I just I just saw so few trailers. Like I didn't yeah. see any marketing on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> like it's weird. Like normally I will come across I mean, you that You see that Cars 3 trailer for like, Oh my god, the Cars 3 trailer. How many times do I need to see Lightning McQueen die? Like, how many times do I, does that need to happen to and me? And then a movie about death and we don't even get to see a trailer. Yeah. So I, yeah, I just I thought the marketing was very, very strange. And I think that's a big reason why so many people missed it yeah. when it was first in theaters. Like, And now that the Blu-ray's out, I'm seeing a lot more people yeah. talking about seeing it. I'm like, where were you? <laughs> Welcome to the party. Because yeah. Coco is... No doubt my new favorite Pixar film. Well, I think one of the things that makes it more than just... Because a lot of Pixar movies are ex- so excellent. But I think they do a lot of like front and back loading of the film. Where it's like all the emotion is in the first five minutes. And then it's like fun. Whereas this one it was like a little more well paced. <sighs> you know i do know <laughs> like because yeah i want to talk because yeah after it came out you know the conversation invariably with like pixar with marvel it's you see a new one and you're like okay where does this rank like where do you put yeah. this in your personal ranking what is your personal mm-hmm. ranking this one shot to the top of my list immediately uh and i i think a big part of that is how good the script is i think it's just really well paced really well structured really well written but it still has that really good strong heart yeah. to it mm-hmm. um and you know and that's another reason why black panther really is up there on the list of 
Marvel movies is because I just think it's a good script. Yeah. Like, it's mm-hmm. just solid in a way that a lot of Marvel movies fail. Yeah. And I feel like Pixar is usually so idea-heavy. Not, like, the ideas of the movies, but, like, let's make a floating house. It's Yeah, it's all very <laughs> high concept. But this Whereas is pretty this high one, concept, too, though. It is, but it's, like, it's but it, it's, it's, it's not well so integrated. unfamiliar that they have to really bring us in. You know? Uh-huh. Well integrated. Most people know about Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. At least peripherally sort of cultural osmosis. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, Mexican Halloween? I don't... Yeah, yeah. but... And I, I mean, like, and they chose a really nice sort of, like... I don't know if it's a theme, but a, like a visual cue with the marigolds. Oh, the marigolds! It's so... God, Which this was, movie's beautiful. That was just a detail about the, f- the the celebration that I didn't know, and then they chose to, like, amplify it. Mm-hmm. And, it and it's such a great tool. Like, yeah. it just mm-hmm. worked really, really well for its function in the film mm-hmm. with it, you know, it's, because it's like, yeah, that's what they're for is they're sort of a, a beacon. Yeah. They're, they're a guide. And so it's like, yeah, just use the marigolds to go. And mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Okay. I can say, so Will brought the Blu-ray home for me, um, like I guess last week or something. I don't remember exactly when it was, but cause he knew that I needed to have it. <laughs> and so I sat down and I watched it with my dad cause mm-hmm. he hadn't watched it before. I cried, like, the whole movie. Like, first time I saw it in the theaters, like, I definitely got weepy. I cried a couple times. Yeah. But, like, seeing it again... Well, because you know when things are going to happen, so you're, and like, you're just, like, And, like, I've been thinking about... I've been thinking about it. I've been listening to the soundtrack yeah. so much. Like, I just cried the whole time. I can't get over uh-huh. this film. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you have a favorite song? Oh... I should have re-listened to the songs. There was one I remember. I think it was so all the songs are "Remember Me." There's the few different versions yeah, of it. Mm-hmm. There's, um, I mean, I guess I don't know if it, it's on the soundtrack, but I don't know if it counts as a song when um, Miguel is playing along to his videotape, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which is a very sweet moment until it's retroactively really dark. Oh, I think my favorite was when they're at the talent show. Poco Loco. That's that definitely up there for me. Because <laughs> that's the first time you hear um, Miguel Miguel's voice. Perform- yeah. Not just his like, Not just playing. his voice. You're like, oh. And he's yeah. so cute and they're so good. Well, and uh, I love it so much because like, you know, things, you get a new perspective on it when you watch it a second yeah. time. You know, you go back knowing that Hector is his real great great grandfather mm-hmm. and so um, like when he's like hyping him up and he's like, you can do this. I believe in you. Like, yeah. and he's so supportive. Like he's really in a difficult place. Cause he's like, this seems like a really bad idea. Like I, this is putting into jeopardy what we both want, but mm-hmm. it's important to you. So I'm going to support you yeah. on it. And he's so proud of him and he's so good. And Oh, yeah. I, I will <laughs> say the, the one thing that, and it might just be because, you know, I know movies enough. I, I felt like, the twist was a little expected. Sure. And it's like, it's a children's movie. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but, I mean, I was fine with it. But... Yeah. I mean, because it holds up. It works. Yeah. And it's still emotionally impactful when they figure it out themselves, yeah. mm-hmm. regardless of if you figured it yeah. out yourself or yeah. not. Because it's not just like, a lot of times a reveal like that, like, it'll become clear to the audience, but either take forever for the characters to figure it out. And or, where you get or frustrated. The, or they don't actually, like, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like in Blade Runner, when he realizes he's not the guy. Ooh, we've got some children yelling next door, so <laughs> if you guys can hear that, that's what we've got going on. I think they're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, which we're recording on. Yes, it is St. Patrick's Day. Alex is not wearing green. I, I did. Pinched. I did pinch him, so we're good there. I'm, like, checking my socks. No, they're black socks. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing green socks, so there you go. Uh, yeah, so there's some noisy children in the conference room next door so apologies audience if you hear that there's nothing we can do <laughs> we might edit them out so we don't know we'll see um but yeah i, I felt like like in blade runner 40 not 2049 like he realized the audience and him realized that he's not like the chosen one or you know he's not this very special replicant yeah, and he's just like sad faced about it he doesn't actually say a word <laughs> yeah that was brutal <laughs> um but yeah i mean and and you know the only reason we figure it out in coco is just because it's like structurally that's what makes yeah. sense you see that coming because you're like yeah that's how this story should go yeah. whereas they don't have any reason to suspect it until it comes together yeah. so it's not frustrating that it's and, just like yeah. you anticipate it well and you're also like 
a kid's movie would never make this horrible man his father or his his, his grandfather father. like <laughs> yeah that would be so bad this horrible horrible murderer no that's not my I grandpa love that the only reason that you do expect it to be um the famous guy is because in the photo the broad shoulders the broad and and, and the guitar yeah but that's like the only yeah I mean, the guitar is pretty clear the like, guitar is the really... only thing that tricked me was yeah. Broad shoulders. yeah. It can't be him because of the shoulders. Yeah. But it's like, oh no, he's just wearing a big suit, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Once his head is on there, it's like, all right. I mean, that it's... suit's a bit big for him, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, my favorite song in the movie was Juanita. Oh, okay. Because that I scene. Changed my mind. I changed is... my mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> I, need, I need a breakdown why that scene is so incredible to me. Because it does everything. That that scene is maybe the most important and like hard working scene in this entire movie. First of all, that scene is that song is just really cute and funny. Like it's just funny and, and you know, it's it's really charming. Okay. They're getting this guitar from Chicharon because they need it. They need and so in order to move the plot forward, they have to do this. Mm-hmm. To to play this song for Chicharon. Now in this scene, we find out that Hector is a musician. Mm-hmm. We didn't know this before. And this is revelatory for the story, for the characters. Miguel gets to see a totally different side of Hector. And the audience gets to see a totally different side of Hector. Uh, you know, he's just this goofy sort yeah. of con man up until that point, And you see this really poignant, yeah. emotionally impactful scene with him. That scene is... That's, <sighs> that's when I cried. Yeah. You get to find out in that scene about second death, yeah, which is very crucial for the plot and totally organic yeah. in the scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it just just everything that the scene is doing blows my mind, and it's seamless. Yeah, it's so well pulled off. Like I, I'm reeling every time I think about how effective that scene is. Like it's one of the best. Scenes, <laughs> like I've ever, it yeah. just works on so many levels, and it does so many things. And like the song is, you know, and and it's all just sort of like lifted by the song itself, which is this cute, funny, irreverent little that ditty they, that they censor. <laughs> yeah, that he censors, and it's a sweet, funny moment. And so it's like it's doing all this heavy lifting, and you don't even know that it's yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I changed my mind a third time on my favorite song. My oh. favorite song is the one that the great grandma sings. Oh, when she on, sings on stage. Oh, oh, La Llorona. Yes, it's beautiful. God, oh. she kicks ass. Oh. Mama Imelda is the oh. most oh. badass character in the movie. Like, with her, I'm just like emotional just thinking about how cool she is. Uh, yeah, with her super awesome alebrije, uh, uh, Pepita. Like, God, that thing is amazing and beautiful, yeah. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just the scariest, coolest thing. Yeah. Okay. One thing that we got to talk about is the theme of this film, because I think it's so unusual. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've been thinking about sort of how it fits into Pixar's usual thing and versus Disney's usual thing. Because I I will say, I recommended this movie to a coworker because I can't stop recommending it to Mm -hmm. everyone on earth. And I was like, watch this movie with your kids. Like, you're going to love it. It's my favorite Pixar movie. And he's like, wow, like, I totally missed it. And I'm like, really? You did? Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But he watched it. And he was like, yeah, it was pretty good. And I was like, oh, man, I cry when I watch that movie. I just cried the whole time. And he's like, you did not. And I was like, yes, I did. And he's like, because he wanted to be a musician. And I'm like, no. That's not <laughs> that's not what the movie's about. And what it's about is so complex because most movies, you know, sort of what Disney would do um, with this movie, what Disney does, you know, it's I'm a young person who wants to do a thing and it's in my heart and I must and they have to convince the world that they can do this thing. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. you've got Little Mermaid, you've got, I mean, just all of yeah, them. Like yeah. it's about some young person who's like, I want a thing. And then through maybe some unexpected adventure. It's they about end them up, teaching everybody else. They end up getting that thing and learning how to have that thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you must follow your heart. Yeah. Sort of. And, you know, in the end he does get to be a musician, yeah. but that's not what it is about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, it's sort of a two-sided thing. I'd say the the biggest, the closest thing I can think of is maybe um, Brave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Where they both learn. Where it's a, maybe more of a compromise. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, because the Pixar sort of formula tends to be somebody who, honestly, most of the movies are about obsolescence. Yeah. Right? Like, you've got Toy Story, you've got The Incredibles, you've got, you know, the, you've got Up. Yeah. you got inside like they're all about they're all about somebody who's like my place is being threatened i'm established and now i maybe have to find a new way of living in the world Mm -hmm. um and this was like a weird sort of in-between place with that right Mm -hmm. yeah it's and there's that moment where if i'm remembering right he's willing to give it all up he's he's a hundred percent ready yeah because he's learned his lesson yeah and and then you know his family like, has to learn yeah, theirs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know he had to come to them and say like I get it, you're right. Like this is important, and that's you know the the lesson is you have to stick by and support your family. Now there are obvious sort of caveats to that yeah. in real life with you know abusers and things like but, don't. But given, all, but given his family, his family <laughs> generally, I'd say it's a nice sentiment to say you yeah. must stick by and support your family. Yeah. And everyone was failing at that because Miguel said, I don't need my family. I can abandon them the way that De La Cruz did. Um, his family was saying, no, we refuse to support you in your dreams. Yeah. And so they had to come they together and yeah, nobody was family. supporting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. God, it's so, <laughs> it's so good. Like everybody had a lesson to learn yeah. and they did. And it was so beautiful. Oh, one of my favorite, this is totally not yeah. having to do with it. No, that's fine. The theme, but, but one of my favorite details is his grandma with the, the shoe. Just always throwing her shoe. <laughs> beating people, breaking oh. the computer. Your magic box. <laughs> Devil box, yeah. I loved that. Imelda's so good. She's so cool. I, I loved that. Like in the end, like the climax scene when they're like chasing down De La Cruz and she's like, and that's for killing the love of my life. And he's like, did you say the love of your life? And she's like, I don't know. I'm so angry with you. <laughs> it's so cute. I don't know what I said. And she sings to him. And he's like, like it's just, he's so enamored. Like, you can just, oh, oh no, you mean yeah, to when, Miguel. When she, when she, oh, when she sings to that Miguel. She, that, she, that wasn't the reason she was upset. Yeah, that she loves music and yeah. she just felt that she had to leave it behind. That's beautiful. And then when she's on stage singing again oh, and goodness. Hector starts playing the guitar and there's just this moment between them where he's just like, my wife is so amazing. Right. And he's just so in love with her and it's so beautiful. When it's almost like in a better world, in a not the time period when Hector and and, and his wife and um, they were like coming up. Mm-hmm. It could have been those two rather than him and what's his face being the stars. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Because she's way more talented than than De La Cruz. Than De La Cruz. Yeah, like, he's. Like, I mean, he's just. He's, know, he's more driven. He's the, yeah, yeah. And he's more driven to do it, and you know, he succeeded because he was ruthless. <sighs> <clears throat> that was. Yes. That was see. I was expecting Hector to be the the yeah. great grandfather. I was not expecting Taylor Cruz to be a murderer. <laughs> uh, but that's I don't know. It felt very I don't know. I mean, it was dark. Yeah. Like in a way that yeah. I mean, Pixar movies get dark, but that was dark. Yeah. That was dark. What was the dog's name? Uh, Dante. Oh, he's so cute. Like Pixar and Disney do animals well, but this but Dante was like. Well, yeah, because, you know, in the wrong hands, he could have been really overbearing and irritating. Oh. But, like, you know, he was just this stupid little dog that was just hanging around sometimes. Yeah, just a guardian angel. Just that this little really angry kid, was, yeah. You know, there for companionship and in, uh, you know, tense moments can help. Yeah. Well, and I love... Yeah. <laughs> but- Transforms. <laughs> yeah, and he gets his stupid little wings. That's adorable. <laughs> <sighs> that scene, though, when they're in the pit... De La Cruz's inconvenient people pit. Because <laughs> he has one. I love that he just like has his guards take them away and they just know what to do with them. Like it's just like, how many people have you thrown in this pit, De La Cruz? Because they just like, yeah, we throw them in the pit, right? Like they just know. Well, it's, like, it's like, I guess people never really leave because I mean, this is afterlife. Yeah, I mean, so that's the only really unless way they to, get forgotten. Unless like, they get forgotten, that's the only way to get rid of people is to throw, throw them in a pit. pit. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a super badass alibrique like Pepita that yeah. can come down and rescue you. Right. And like, I love that. Like, they couldn't get out on their own. Like, they needed the family to come yeah. and save them. They needed the support of their family in order to, to make it out. Like, that was really solid, sort of thematically. 
uh, you know, Dante shows up and is like, hey, I found you guys. I can't help. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's not till Pepita gets there that they're mm. rescued. Uh, it's, it's so well made. Because, you know, that's, that's what I have an issue with with a good handful of Pixar movies is that they kind of parts will break down or lose their way. Like Up is beautiful and a wonderful movie for the first half. And then I think the second half of that movie really kind of lost its way. Yeah. Like it, it struggled and things. The more the more characters that showed up, the more you're like, like you know, we start out with this beautiful and tragic love story between these two people who found out that they can't have the adventure in life that they wanted to, mm-hmm. and we end with talking dogs flying airplanes. <laughs> like what happened to this movie? And, and I think one talking <laughs> dog would have been perfect, but having multiple topic talking dogs it was just a lot sociopathic it was it just got it it got out of hand there's just too many characters (laughs) too many characters yeah like kevin and doug are perfect but Mm -hmm. like it just got a little too crowded it got crowded and it just it it lost its like why couldn't like the dangers of exploring in venezuela have been yeah the the antagonist (laughs) yeah uh, yeah, and, and and part of that movie was that the main um, guy, you know, directing that film died um, partway through. Oh. Yeah, he di- I can't think of it. I feel bad that I can't think of who it was, but he was like um, the creative director of the movie oh, or okay. something. And he died like halfway through sort of the, the conception of yeah. the film. And so they were on their own for the rest of it. And yeah. that's, you, it shows. Yeah. It shows that his vision was interrupted. Um. But yeah, and you know, something like Wally, like it's, it, you know, it's beautiful. And I really like the whole thing, but it definitely feels sort of inconsistent. Mm-hmm. You know, it has this big shift and it feels like a different movie at a certain point. Yeah. Whereas I think Coco is just solid. Yeah. Well, because like it, in Up, it goes from a house on the ground to being in Venezuela. And from in Wally dogs. goes from this desolate desolate earth earth to up in space yeah coco it's like the living world to the world of the dead but there's not like this weird it still feels part of the same universe. well yeah i mean because that's the you know that's the break into two as far as you know film structure goes like yeah. that happens you know that's the point in a movie in yeah. film structure where you go somewhere else yeah. mm-hmm. where you're some you're, a new thing is happening you know the beginning of the movie first act is establishing yeah. the conflict setting up the character and then something happens we're somewhere else now and that's when Miguel gets cursed <laughs> <laughs> I love that when he, they're like three seconds later <laughs> well, I can't believe you <laughs> three seconds <sighs> Miguel Miguel uh, yeah Mm. God, I love that film. But yeah, it it does it feels interesting to compare it to the other Pixar and other Disney films. How it really does sort of tread between them. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, it it was it, it kind of got me thinking when my coworker was like, "Well, because he wanted to be a musician," and I'm like, "Well, no, like that's what the Disney version of yeah. that film would have been about." You know, that's that's what... Whereas the... So, like, this is Tixar's iteration of that Disney concept. Yeah. whereas instead of he got to be a musician, it's like his family... Supports, supports him. Supports him as in his dream. Yeah. And he doesn't have to abandon them. Yes. To live his dream. Yes. And... It doesn't, history doesn't repeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh... Do you think you have, like... Do you think you could list, like, a top three Pixar films? Because recently Mikey, uh, Mikey Newman asked people um, top three, bottom three Pixar. And Coco came up very rarely, and I think it's because nobody saw it. I feel like it's out of the league. Like, it's just, it's not, like, better, but it's just, like, a completely different kind of movie. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's a fully matured Pixar that I don't even want to, like, put it in the top three because I don't think it... Do you think it's it's unfair? <laughs> yeah, well, and, it's, and I think it's it, uh, it's also because Pixar is part of this massive corporation now. Like, I mean, it was always associated, but it was never like owned. And yeah, they through, it's like so integrated. Know, integrated. Now. Um, so I think they just have every resource they could ever need. Um, but I, I, I'm also really curious of how things are going to go forward without Lasseter. 
Yeah, I mean, we'll have I to see. I think that's going to be beneficial in the long run. Yeah, it's but definitely... He has been, it's a big question mark right now as to what's going to happen. the head of Pixar since the beginning. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, it's a big, big deal. deal. It's definitely things are going to be different yeah, one way or another. Different, and I think it's good that he's gone. Um, sure, it's what hap- had to happen. Exactly. Um, but as far as top three... <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll tell you mine. Okay. And, and like, can we pull up a list? Go ahead. A, While I'm well, listing, I have, I have oh, it. I can do it on my phone. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so my, I I did some thinking on this, uh, discussing with Will and Dylan, sort of considering, and I don't think I could do a bottom three because I think that sort of I've avoided the ones that I probably would like the least. Yeah. I've only seen the first Cars movie. Uh, well, fun fact: that's the only Pixar one. The other ones aren't Pixar. Cars 3 might be Pixar. Cars 2 is Disney Animation Studios. It's not Pixar. Planes is Disney Animation Studios. I didn't yet. know that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, but I didn't see The Good Dinosaur, and I haven't really heard anything good about that. It has some highlights, but it's not good. <laughs> yeah. My older brother, Steve, was telling me he saw it because he's got a little girl. and um, It's kind of scary. Yeah, he was like, it was just like the story of a sad dinosaur getting beaten up a lot. And I was like, well, that doesn't sound nice. He's like, it wasn't. I didn't like it. It made me sad the whole time for no good reason. If you want a happy prehistoric movie, watch The Croods. <laughs> you know, I didn't see it. It looked wonderful. It's, I wouldn't say that was that one's necessarily good either, but. <laughs> but it's a good time? But it's, it's funny. Huh. And it's visually appealing. Whereas The Good Dinosaur is very like, for a Pixar movie, very gray. Like the only thing that's colorful is the dinosaur. Hmm. Yeah. Weird. Because everything else is like realistic looking except for the characters. Hmm. Like the world is just photographic almost. Bizarre. Yeah. Also it takes place in like Colorado. There's a lot of dinosaur bones in Colorado. Know, but like <laughs> pick somewhere more interesting. <laughs> Alright. Dinosaur uh, so Colorado. Because okay, so uh, yeah, I did a lot of thinking on this and it was really honestly my top two was pretty easy. The third was um more of a difficult choice. First, obviously, Coco. Second, I think, is Brave. Mm-hmm. Third, probably Wally. I really love Wally. Yeah. I mean, for all I've said, that it feels inconsistent. Like it's really wonderful and magical and sweet, and and it, especially it was just you know very inventive and yeah. daring. Mm-hmm. You know, like I like my uh, my older brother's ex. Apparently, she, at the time, she like you know. Like, they were seeing it, and he was just like, wow, this is so good, and, like, amazed by the beginning of this film that was like, there not, there's not even any dialogue. It's amazing that the story is being told in this way. And she leans over, and she says, if they don't start talking soon, I'm going to leave. And it's like, what? You're going to leave? <laughs> Literally, the history of cinema comes from silence. Yeah, so I couldn't, yeah, that's kind of insane that she felt that way about it. But I thought it was magical and incredible as far as storytelling goes. Um, so I think, I don't know if I can rank them, like one to three or like sure i mean i'm like, putting you on the spot here I can, this give, is hard. I can give three that are my favorite but i don't know if i can list rank them, them. yeah um a bug's life that's a very i mean it's that one's like i mean toy story is the first one but a bug's life is like pixar sort of coming into yeah. its own mm-hmm. yeah I mean, I, it felt bigger too yeah it and like i mean the age that we were when that came out too yeah. like it was it was a good time yeah. yeah very formative um i love the incredibles I have such a complicated relationship. I'll watch that one anytime, anyplace. It's wonderful and good, but it's also got these really weird Ayn Randian ideas in it. Oh, yeah. With the sort of exceptionalism and like, we're special and people shouldn't try to be as special as us. We're innately special. Like, it's troubling, right? And it's like, if you put that out of your mind, it's a wonderful movie. It's fun. It's a good time. It's beautiful. It's sweet. But it does have some weird... Undertones. Well, hopefully, those won't be present in, in the, the sequel. Yeah, which I've been waiting for so long for. Yeah, I know. Because that's the only one that really needed a sequel. Yeah, that, that invited else, a sequel. That invited a sequel, whereas every other one, it's like, let's tack on a sequel. Yeah, it's like that. I mean, especially because like Pixar movies, a lot of the time don't feel um, like they make room for a sequel because yeah. it's like it's such a closed sort of tied up story like they're all very complete yeah. that's the, the way they structure them and then finding dory or finding nemo not finding, finding dory. nemo i didn't like dory as much but no nemo is no i mean good. yeah dory was good it was cute it was nice i was glad i saw it but no it doesn't really hold up it was trying a little too hard i think yeah i mean it was because finding it, i mean there just wasn't room in dory's character for a whole movie it just didn't quite if there would have been like another I just thought the emotion was a little too forced. Mm-hmm. 
but I loved the adventure at the aquarium and all that. that yeah, I know. It was fun papers. with the with the Nick Offerman Duck. octopus and the, all of that. The Idris Elba sea lion. <laughs> Oh, Idris Elba. Well, I always forget how much voice acting he does. Yeah, I mean, and he's in Zootopia. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was good. He had he had one of the funniest jokes in the entire movie. When he's like, this isn't some m- magical movie where you just sing a song and all of your dreams come true. So let it go. <laughs> oh, Disney, I see you. Meanwhile, like, the theme song of the movie is, like, the Shakira dreams coming true yeah. theme. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cute. Yeah, Zootopia is good. But, I mean, and honestly, like, Disney has been definitely putting in some entries to rival Pixar on their own. Oh, yeah. With Wreck-It Ralph. Tangled. Tangled. Uh, I mean, okay, I like Tangled a lot. I Tangled think, is very cute, but... I think it was, it was, I mean, it, it sort of began this new generation of Disney animated films yeah. and they were still sort of testing the waters yeah. and so in some ways it um I mean it was really fresh and cool I think in some ways it doesn't quite hold up to what they did after it because yeah. they were sort of finding their way still and I think them their reliance in this new 3D animation era on princesses mm-hmm. is a handicap because mm-hmm. Wreck-It Ralph is fantastic and there's no prince. Like, there's a princess, but she's like a race car driving, like, candy princess. Yeah. You don't know she's a princess for most of <laughs> the Voiced by Sarah Silverman. Yeah. <laughs> race car driving Where's candy like, princess voiced by Sarah Silverman. Many more. Like, many more. You know. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, and like, and Zootopia. Frozen. Yeah, Frozen. I mean, and honestly, like, I'm, I love all of the princess movies they've made. These, this new, you know, yeah. Tangled. I do like a lot. Frozen was incredible. Moana was beyond belief. You know, yeah. like... They're very good. They're very good. But, but they, it's... They, they do stick to the Disney, like, one-dimensional, um, like you were saying earlier, with, like, the Disney version of Coco would have been about the music. Rather than yeah, it would have been about this boy yeah, they achieving can only his dreams. there being one premise, mm-hmm. or one goal, rather than, why can't it be complicated? Mm-hmm. And Pixar does complicate it well. <laughs> they do complicate it well. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of... You know what, though? I think animated film does complicated maybe the best of anything I've ever seen mm. is Paranorman by Leica Studios. I love that movie so I much. I love that movie. Like, I mean, like, and it was up against Ra- uh, Brave and Wreck-It Ralph at the Academy Awards. Brave one, I think. I understand. But, like, Paranorman, Paranorman is... was robbed. <laughs> Leica is... So, you can't even, like, like they're, they're on a completely different level. Well, and one thing, I'd say they struggle with comedy a lot, which is weird for a cartoon. <laughs> they, like, some, I find that some of their humor really does not land well, like, especially in um, Kubo. Kubo has a, a lot, a lot smaller of, a, like, a, like, there's no, like, laughing out loud moments. You're just, like, little giggles. And I, I don't know, I just felt like a lot of the humor just... Didn't work for me. I didn't care for the the Beatles dad, dad jokes, but I mean, he's the dad. Yeah, and it, like yeah, <laughs> and it, but it, yeah, there was it just felt like, on, and I, I may have mentioned this before on the podcast, but in um, Box Trolls, which by and large I loved, mm-hmm. like there was some really cringy humor moments, yeah. like when. Um, Dakota Fanning's character. It's Dakota Fanning, right? Or is it Elle Fanning? Which Fanning? I don't know. I didn't finish that movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's near the beginning. Um, when the first, the two of them are first meeting, um, she, he asks, like, where, you know, she's like, he's like trying to ask her how to get to someplace. And she says, um, oh, it's on milk. And, and he's like, where's milk? And she's like, it, well, it turns into Curd's Way. And then there's a literal, like, drum like like cymbal crash drum beat thing like ba-dunks yeah. like in the like don't <laughs> don't put that in like it was a bad enough joke audiences are smart yeah it's a bad enough joke anyway like it was like oh that's punny and then they do a cymbal crash and it's like why would you do that mm-hmm. it was bad and they just they struggle with her but paranorman like that really complicated idea of like People do bad things mostly because they're scared. Whoa! Whoa! Like, there's no bad people, just scared people? That's huge! That's huge! And, yeah, 
So I really appreciate movies like this and like Coco, where it's like it takes on a more challenging idea. Because, like, you know, I love Wreck-It Ralph. I love Brave. But both of them just sort of boil down to, like, you can be who you are in your heart. It's like, great. (laughs) Yep, thanks. Like, I mean, there's just so many movies out there, especially children's movies that are already like that. So it's nice to see something that takes on a more challenging topic. Yeah. Hmm. Do we have anything else to say about Coco? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think we... We've got a little time, but... We've talked a lot about Coco. Yeah. And I think it's just pretty... Uh, one thing I'll say is, like, the trailers don't do it justice even. Like, when, when you finally get to the world of the dead and it's, like... Huge and beautiful. Like, and it goes back farther. Like, if you if you were to imagine it as like one of the earlier Pixar movies, you'd have like a middle of and background of, of yeah. Buildings. There would be the illusion this was like, like six backgrounds of, yeah. of of buildings and stuff. They'd find ways to sort of imply yeah vastness, like, but it, this it is just there. Huge. It's, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. I. uh God, I loved all of the voice actors, too. I just thought they were really, like, um, Gail Garcia Bernal. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. He's wonderful and cute. And (laughs) he was very, very funny. (laughs) Yeah, I I feel like, I feel like I probably did have more to say, but it's just not, um. Not coming. It's not coming. I mean, that's part of the trouble is, like, when I really want to discuss something on this show, I'll end up, like talking to other people about it so much that then I, it's like I got it all out yeah. <laughs> and then I don't know what to say anymore because it's like I feel like I said things that I didn't yeah. necessarily say. But no, mostly I just really, really, really wanted to talk about the scene with Juanita because yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's important. It's so important. And like I just hope... One is when you realize the movie has stakes. Yeah. I mean, you knew because... Knew He's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna get stuck there. Get stuck but like, there, getting like, stuck there is worse than we imagined. Yeah. Um, Especially if somebody forgets you. Yeah, which they will inevitably. Yeah. You know. Because they don't know what happened. Yeah, I mean, except for like people like Frida Kahlo, and yes, yeah, they're not gonna be forgotten. Her her inclusion, I think, confused people. I thought it was fun, but like, the the media is very much trying to like repaint her as somebody she wasn't what do you mean like as far as i'm aware she was very like anti-capitalist and like oh yeah but now she's like in a disney movie i mean yeah she's um (laughs) she's definitely been sanitized yeah and i was like i was i think i was listening to a podcast i mean she's a barbie now yeah and i was listening (laughs) to a podcast and they were talking about her being a barbie and and they're talking about how the barbie doesn't have to even have the unibrow that's not frida yeah. That's not Frida. That's not Frida. That's somebody dressing up as Frida. Yeah. I did Which say, happens in the movie. Yes. <laughs> in Coco. Yes, and I will say that was one of the funniest things ever was that Hector kept dressing up like Frida Kahlo. I, I, I love did like her... Her, her, uh, her weird papaya her, thing. Her weird papaya thing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Like, that really cracked me up. She's like, they crawl out and they are all me. And then they go to their mother. And they go to their mother. And she's also me. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, that's Frida. <laughs> it's all Frida. Everything has Frida's face. <laughs> I loved it. Um, but I, I, I gotta say, like, just thinking about Hector, and, like, he's such a great character because he's got so many different sides to him. You know, like, for a lot of the movie, he's this sort of goofy sidekick yeah. with his skeleton bone jokes. He's flying everywhere and breaking apart, and it's all these cute skeleton bone jokes. But then, like, he's this really loving and devoted father yeah. and he has this whole other side to him and you know he's a he's a husband and he, you know he's he's got these sort of dimensions to yeah. him and it oh god and the one thing in his whole life that he wanted to be remembered is is just so that happening. yeah well and he just wants to be remembered by yeah. his daughter like he just oh, the ending <laughs> oh my god it's so beautiful okay <laughs> I was because I because I can't stop thinking about this movie. I was thinking about the future, Miguel's future, because he's gonna grow up and he's gonna be a successful musician and he's gonna touch the world with his music and he's gonna carry on his great grandfather's legacy. 
and one day he's gonna and 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 you know every year Hector's gonna come back and see him and be so proud of him and he's gonna grow old and one day Miguel will die and then he'll be reunited with his family in the land of the dead and it's and yeah. he's gonna see Hector again and it's gonna be so beautiful <laughs> like I've got this fan fiction in my head <laughs> of like well that's you know after whole... this beautiful long life Miguel's gonna go yeah. and see. You get to, Hector again. Your family gets to see you every year, and then you get to see them eventually. That's like so, you know. Like I cry a little thinking yeah, about no, this beautiful like, idea. It's very comforting. It too. is. Well, yeah, and and you know, like I've talked to people who, you know, they're like, oh yeah, like I really liked it, and I did get a little teary about it. But I think in my position, uh, it's just specifically for me, especially emotionally impactful. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, of course, it does make me think about my mom. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like this whole other experience for me when I, you know, like just uh, recently I was driving home from work and I was listening to the Coco soundtrack. And like the moment that the Hector version of Remember Me came on, I just began yeah. weeping, mm-hmm. like just sobbing in my car mm-hmm. because it was so, it was just like every word of it meant so much to me. The idea of someone saying like, I'm still here and I still love you even if we can't be together yeah. right now. And it's like, I'm crying right now <laughs> just thinking yeah. about it because yeah. it's like, you know, it is, it's so comforting. And, it, and it's also, you know, it is very hard you know and and it's it's you know it's a hard thing to think about but you are going to (laughs) you know you can't not and so to 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 think about it in that way of saying like i'm still here and i still love you and for for in those moments when you are thinking about it and you can't not think about it for it to be a happy thought rather than yeah or you know at least bittersweet yeah Mm -hmm. yeah okay collecting myself now (laughs) (sighs) yeah so And, you know, and I mean, that's been on my mind a lot lately with, you know, getting married and knowing, like, I can't have my mom there the way that I had imagined it. And so it's nice to to think about, like, but she is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm good. I'm good. No, I totally know where you come from. Like, I had therapy yesterday, so (laughs) (laughs) the thing about therapy for me is I didn't didn't even know I could cry and then Mm -hmm. figured out I could. And I was like, now it's just like. Every other therapy session, I'm just like, she's like, go ahead. I'm like, <sighs> okay, thank you. She, as soon as she gives me permission, I'm just like, <laughs> cry. <laughs> yeah. Like she's like, yesterday she was like, um, I noticed you're holding back, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Tears automatically. Yeah, <laughs> just a little reminder. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Open the open the gates. Which I mean, I, I always try to remember, but like, sometimes I'm like, I know that if I'm crying, I can't really communicate it as well. So I oh god, I tell me about so it. So with her, I was like, I felt like I wanted to. Like save my peace first. Yeah, hold control yourself yeah, to a she, degree. She's like, she, you need to like. You need to do this. <laughs> I can understand with how intense the emotion is, mm-hmm. just from that. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I I get the idea. And then at the end, she was like, I don't want to leave you like broken for the day, so let's do a little guided meditation. Mm. And she put me through this meditation, and then at the end of the meditation, I was just crying. Mm. I was like, that was so powerful and beautiful, and it was so simple. And she's like, yeah, you did that. I was like, what? <laughs> and, and the way she like it, I had control over the meditation like she was like describing it but then she was like now describe it to me what what it's like mm-hmm. and I was just like and I'll share it too because I think it's beautiful she was like imagine there's an infinite amount of light pouring over you from above your head it has no end and she's like now imagine what you're feeling what does it look like inside your body and I described it as like this black churning mass of, and I was like I couldn't even describe it at first. I was like, oh, it's going to sound silly. She's like, no, it's not going to. Mm-hmm. I was like, permission. <laughs> and so I described it as that. And then she's like, now what color is the light? And I was like, it's every color. And she's like, what temperature is the light? And I was like, it's the perfect temperature. <laughs> and then she's like, now imagine the light getting a hold of that, whatever, whatever you're feeling. What happens to it? And then I just started crying. I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Mm. And I was like, it made it solid and clear. That's nice. Yeah. So that, things can, like that can look at it and it's not gonna hurt you Mm. yeah yeah that's it's so wonderful when you find something like that that really unlocks something for you well i think having help Uh uh-huh because like 
trying to meditate on your own like, it's hard you have some insight but like but, but but like you need i don't know that permission that yeah you know at validation. least you know when you're inexperienced someone to coach you through yeah. and then you learn and then maybe yeah. you can do it on your own but at first you really need someone to teach you how to do it just to to permit you to do it but sure and, i mean frankly like I have an experience somewhat like that just watching Coco. Like, no, no, no. for that's, real. Like, it is. it's totally, like, good, like, to be able to have a release. Mm-hmm. Cause, it's extremely cathartic. Because, you know, all day at work, you can't have a release because you're at work. Mm-hmm. You don't, uh, and, like, with your family, you don't want to, like, bother that. You, you know, there's just yeah. so many things that build up, build up, build up. And it's but, hard to find the, the space yeah. to do that. And for a lot of people, there isn't space. And for a lot of people, I think it, it is it is through sort of a third party catharsis yeah. Yeah. of mm-hmm. of a film. Yeah. You know, that's the film is permission. Yeah, it's to a to experience per, a dark theater is a safe place mm-hmm. to just to experience out. certain yeah. emotions yeah. that you're not given room to experience even in your you, life. Even if you know them and have them, you just you need like locked away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just cry the whole yeah. film like anything that happens like I I, I, I want to bring up um, we talked about it earlier but uh, uh, Call Me By Your Name yeah I'm surprised actually how little I cry at that movie and I think it's because I've already been to that place and I've moved past that place that the mm-hmm. main character's in so you don't necessarily need what it gives I don't need what it gives because I I I I understand and empathize, and I and I'm not living it anymore. Yeah, and something also, you've worked through and already. I think this is such a powerful part of the movie. It's just visually, without any script saying this, or without any dialogue. Saying it's this. it's subtextual. Yeah, you know he's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you got this. Mm-hmm. It sucks, but you got this. You're just a little baby gay, and you'll oh, get God. there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just I do find this sort of um, attitude towards death and and um, loved ones who are gone in Coco to be very very comforting yeah. for me. You know, it's like you know I've got a few years distance, but like you know I, I'm something I'm going to be dealing with yeah. for the rest of my yeah. life certainly. And and for now, you know, maybe I am I think I am still sort of working through it in ways that I'm not totally aware of. You know. Yeah. I, at the time, I was, I had to struggle to give myself permission to grieve fully. Well, and it's like, the permission to gr- grief is like so much more complicated than <laughs> anyone can even, because it's like, yeah, you know you need it. But you, but you and like, and it, and it will happen. Yeah. Like, I learned this. But like sometimes you just want it to happen and it's not happening. Yeah. And sometimes it's all happening and you're like, I don't want this to happen. And well, and my struggle was, you know, trying to bypass it, oh. you know. I didn't want to take the time and the space to grieve because I wanted to take care of others. You yeah. know, I wanted to take care of my brothers. I wanted to take care of my dad. And I didn't have the time to mm-hmm. grieve for myself. Yeah. And I learned, you know, I had just the hardest time. And, and I ended up learning, like, this is happening whether I want yeah. it to or not. Yeah. And it has to be felt. And there is, you know, maybe even like sort of a certain amount of grieving that has to be done and you can't skip it skip it and it'll happen at one time or another and i think that's scary and i think it's also like once you realize that there's an amount that it's not going to go away but like that there's this amount that's like there's a reason there's a required amount because it's an important thing Mm -hmm. it's an important person it's an important feeling yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a piece of your heart. It's yeah. a piece of your life, you know, because I, you know, I, I'm not just grieving for my parent. I'm grieving for everything that I was supposed to have. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, my wet, uh, yeah, we happen to be street. looking through windows right now at my wedding venue across the street from the library. And it's like, she was supposed to be there and I was supposed to have that. And she was supposed to babysit my kids. Yeah. And, you know, we were, I, she, I was supposed to, you know, watch her grow old and she was supposed to, you know, watch me become a mother and like all of these things that, we were both robbed of and all of this potential. And so that's so much grief to take on. And it's, (laughs) and there's, and then the the whole, you know, idea of the world that Coco brings 
forward and the the beliefs of, of um, people in Mexico it's like it maybe it's not something that's being robbed maybe it's just something that's happening behind yeah some some it's I'm, not happening, the, it happening yeah it's, it's not happening the way that we wanted it to yeah. but it's still happening yeah and then yes. and, and that's it's a very comforting thought yeah. to believe that you know it's not it's not quite the same and it's not what I had wanted it to be but it's still there yeah. it's still there uh you know it's really sweet um because actually, uh, tomorrow is um, is the three year anniversary of when she passed away, and um, so if or no, tomorrow is the three year anniversary of her funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, a few days ago was the anniversary of when she passed, and on that day, Monica, um, my my dad's girlfriend, she's Buddhist, and she put out an offering of food for my mom um because that's a buddhist practice and i just thought that was really you know she just decided she wanted to do this herself you know she thought this is important and this is the way that i and she of course of course she never met her she never knew her but she knows how important she was and still is for the family and she has great respect and love for that experience and so she just did this herself and and i just thought that was the most wonderful gesture and she's gonna um do the same thing um tomorrow because that's yeah. part of that practice and you know she's always talking about how she feels my mom's sort of presence lingering and she she believes that that she is still there with us and and you know it is really nice especially you know as someone sort of coming into the yeah. family mm-hmm. and in a way taking on the role yeah. that my mother had filled yeah. for her to have this connection and this respect for her is very very meaningful yeah. to me i appreciate that a lot so this thanks gonna, monica this is totally coming from our um where we operate with the no guilty pleasures but um, <laughs> long island medium is a show <laughs> 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 that i i i like watching it because it, it gives just gives me the release even if i don't you know fully believe or whatever but it's it's very much like the thing I like about it is it's like, no matter what be- thing you believe in, taking the time out of your day to remember somebody mm-hmm. and that memory not just being something like, oh, nice, you know, it's like, it's a way to keep them alive. Like, keep, in, mm-hmm. you know, like... Keep, yeah. In, like, like in, in Coco. Coco. It's such a good movie, Alex. Yeah, yeah. It's so smart and wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, you know, I I do, I do feel a lot of remorse for the, the things that I wish that my mother had had time to do. You know, I feel like when she got ill, that was when, that was supposed to be when she was able to become, you know, somebody other than mom. Like, yeah. we were all, you know, grown. Like, my my brother had just, um, you know, entered his 20s, and it was, like, time for us to just be adults. And for her to have the room and the time and the energy to find herself in other capacities, and she was beginning to, and I, and I you know, it, it sucks so much that I didn't get to see all the things that she still had left to do. Um, but, you know, at least, like, you know, r- raising us, and, and I mean, and, I, and I've come to understand, um, you know, talking to my dad, that, like, that was a huge and important thing for her life, is to, you know, was to ra- raise us kids, and, and that was, you know, really, I mean, she was very good at it, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, and, and she was so proud of us, and, and, you know, and I feel like we're doing her right, you know, and, you know, the way that she raised us has shaped who we are and what we're doing with our lives, and that's her legacy. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, that, that, that comforts me as far as, you know, the, the, you know, feeling like there was something missed, you know, at least we're carrying on who she was and what she taught us. One thing I, I like to sort of imagine, too, is when we... If we want to, we can use our creativity for humans. We have this strange, powerful thing. <laughs> we can just imagine somebody who's gone doing all the things that they missed. Yeah. And what's to say that's not happening? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, that's totally, like, 
you know, a little woo woo, but like, <laughs> why not? Like, yeah. I mean, at the you know. very least, it's like it's you know, it's 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 a really lovely thing yeah. to think to think about and to imagine and to wonder what if you know. <sighs> well, gee, this turned into a little like therapy support group Wonder- discussion. But like, no, you but can't it's... you can't ignore this stuff. With, yeah, with this, movie. this yeah, yeah, that's what this movie is about. You know, yeah. you know the the that Miguel is able to carry on Hector's legacy and you know achieve the things and you know help Hector be recognized for the things that he did achieve mm-hmm. and and yeah. also like repair this broken family mm-hmm. that even though they're so close and they're so big mm-hmm. there's still there's still this like broken part mm-hmm. yeah. <sighs> lots of feelings yeah, let's, let's do our little like calming breath <sighs> yes no, this is wonderful and I, and I think part of it has to do with being being in the same yeah, room no, like, like it's harder yeah. to have this kind of a conversation yeah when you're looking at a computer we, screen yeah, yeah it's no, just, we're looking at each other yeah. in each other's eyes so yes it's, like, it's, it's nice oh and i and i hope we get to do it yeah. this way more well and this is like important too you mm-hmm. know yeah we for, should def- for our listeners for ourselves yeah to grow as people yeah. <laughs> yeah. to remember yeah uh yeah no we should definitely try to um make this happen more well now we know a way to do it yeah we can do this so anytime that it works for me to yeah, come we up here just do like let's every you know how frequently we just yeah. do it like lunch and recording yeah <laughs> every yeah like, great like awesome i need dinner, to get out more anyway, anyway so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i come to the library a lot but like not <clears throat> that's usually just by myself <laughs> yeah after uh, after the wedding stuff is all over will and dylan and i are going to try to get an apartment um, or something. I don't know. We're still working on exactly what, you know, where we're going to move, but we're going to try to move a little closer north. You know, we don't want to go too far because Dylan and I both still work down yeah. in Woodburn <laughs> well, yeah, slash Hubbard. Yeah, I remember Hubbard. you were up in uh, Hazeldale and having to commute. I didn't work there yet. You didn't? Okay. No, I got that job after I moved no, down there. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I would not do that. I can't believe Will does. Uh, but, no, so, I mean, I may find myself a little, in a, you know, a little bit more of a convenient distance. But, like, it's not that big of a deal to drive up here on a weekend. So we should make this happen more because it's nice. And if you're here at the library all the time anyway. Right. <laughs> I'll just, like, record bonus episodes every once in a while. <laughs> sure. Do it. I'm at the library. I'm on the quiet level. I'm breaking the rules by talking. <laughs> I was on the quiet level, uh, I think it was probably Thursday, and these two girls sat down and were t- chatting. I'm like, they're going to get in trouble, because last time I was here, and I got a phone call, and I was it was a short phone call, and I was like, okay, mom, yeah, bye. Like, I got yelled at by the librarian. Because it's not, it's like, you can have a conversation. Out here, yeah. Out here, just not upstairs. Yeah, that's, that's the... the quiet level. Quiet. They have a special door. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we do recommendations, recommendations, Alex? I'll start with mine. Yes. Because it's from the library. From the library. So I w- it's actually two recommendations wrapped into one. Um, I, I think I probably mentioned it before, but the Commonplace podcast, um, uh, hosted by Rachel Zucker. Um, she interviews poets and poetry-adjacent people and writers and critiques. Criti- critiques? Uh, critics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've just been listening to older episodes and learning a lot about different poets and being inspired by their work um and recently i over it took like three days to listen to it because it was a long episode um she interviewed sharon olds who is a pulitzer prize winning poet Mm. um and i have in my hand odes by sharon olds which (laughs) odes by (laughs) olds um and i'm gonna read not a whole poem because they're kind of long but every poem is an is an ode Mm. and there's i'll read some of the titles because the titles are just beautiful in their own right um so there's ode to the hymen ode Mm -hmm. to the penis ode to my sister ode to menstrual blood ode blowjob ode um that's funny ones like that douchebag ode single ladies ode uh, ode to my fat ode to the glands like there's just like everything that's cute and i just love that she's like she doesn't care (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. you know she's like this unabashed pe- she's a Pulitzer Prize winning poet like let her write about it you know yeah um, you don't have to be a Pulitzer Prize winning poet to write about true. menstrual that's blood true. that's true anyway. but, like, I just love that <laughs> I just love it um, so I'm gonna read just a, a couple lines from Ode to the Penis because that's the first one I read and I wrote a response to it after I read it um, so let's see 
So I'm not flirting with, flirting with you. I'm just saying I like you. Not as an object, but a subject. A prime mover, a working theory of plumbing and ecstasy. A boy's pride and anxiety. Wind sock of zephyr and gale. Half of the equation of creation. <laughs> oh, I just love it. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that sounds like a really interesting book. She's just good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how about you? Well, you already know what I'm recommending. Uh, I know. You do, because I couldn't help myself. I had to talk about it earlier, and we got coffee. Um, so, because my recommendations are almost always podcasts, because that's all I do is listen to podcasts. <laughs> I have to get through the day somehow. Uh, I just very late to the party got into. Um, Hello from the Magic Tavern. Now, some folks out there may already be into it. It's great if you're into something like the Adventure Zone. Uh, basically, it is a an improv comedy podcast about a guy from our world who has been accidentally transported into the magical land of Foon, and he is creating this pot. He's making this podcast, uh, interviewing different sort of creatures and people that he meets um, while he tries to find a way back to Chicago, and it's so funny. Like, I didn't believe that this concept could work. I, I didn't listen to it for a long time because I was like, no way they could pull that off. They do. They do. And it just, I, oh, it's so funny. Yeah, check it out. If you like something like The Adventure Zone, um, it's not a role, it's not like a game, role-playing game podcast. It's just the sort of improv storytelling but they're really on top of it. It's it's very, very, very good. Like, they've got a, a really great dynamic. Um, they know what they're doing. Check it out if you want to bust a gut. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need to do something special because we're here. Yeah, well, know? okay. Um, So, I our, um, our anniversary, oh, our one-year oh anniversary God. is coming up oh, in, like, right, a couple right, weeks. Right, right, Because right. so, I believe our first episode went up on April 12th. So that's coming up soon. I don't know if there's we want to do some kind of special thing about I it. Know. I don't know what to do. Because that's going to be going up, um, yeah, like, the week after my wedding. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we need to force our silent listeners to say something. Yeah, guys. Get at us. Talk to us, man. I know you're out there. Somebody's listening. Even like a cryptic, weird, like... Oh, that would be the best. Just like a code or like... Just the Some nonsense. A or just like some like weird little random tweet or like... A f- you know what would be really cool? Like an iTunes review that's like not a review. It's like this weird like cryptic... Mm-hmm. Sure. I, I mean, as long as you give us five stars, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, like, give us five stars and give us directions to your favorite like restaurant or like... Yeah, whatever. Just yeah, I would love because this is talk you know about your favorite aunt. Like, this is a fa- this is a conversation <laughs> podcast, and we want to talk to you too. Like we don't want to be in an echo chamber here. Yeah. Like yeah. it's you know we need we need some input from you guys. Like what do you what are you interested? What do you think? Do do you disagree with us? Like I would love to hear. We're on Twitter. We got an email. If you want to email us, it's literarymeritpod at gmail dot com. Very easy to remember. Send us um, that clip from the end of Thor Ragnarok with different songs. I mean, yeah, if you find those, I, if you make those, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I, I have done nothing. All the, I did yesterday was listening listening to the um, I Need a Hero version. And the toxic <laughs> version is also good. The original version is good, but I Need a Hero is the best. So try to be that. Yeah, any kind of weird nonsense you find. Cut to the feeling. Somebody do cut to the cut feeling. Like, cut. Oh my god. Do oh it. my god. Do it. <laughs> Please. I am not talented at the computer arts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like play it on silent and then like play the track. Yeah. But no, I'm so jealous of these podcasts that get people like talking to them and sending them like messages and stories also, and stuff. Like, if anyone works at Zenny or. Oh yeah, if anyone or, wants to. Or Warby Parker, either or both. Yes, because... Uh, like, that's really the only sponsor that makes sense for us. Yeah, or like, or like Redbox or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't... Great Courses Plus, that makes some sense for us. I don't know. Right Western then. Washington University. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I have a friend who wants to do an episode with us, and she went to Western too. So, like, every... Almost every guest we've had... Well, I mean, we've had 
three guests, four guests, and one of them was from Western. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my brother said that he would ha- happily sponsor us, but I don't think that he quite has the means to do so. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the tweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, anyone out there wants to hit us up, please do. We'd love to hear from you. Just to sort of in in summation, yeah. <laughs> please talk to us. We want to hear. We want to hear from you. Um, and hey, if there's anyone out there who you know has some interesting insights, who um, does something cool, we're always looking for interesting guests. You know, at this point, it's just people that we know personally who we've just been like, hey, you're cool, want to talk to us. But if there's anyone out there who feels like you might, you know, be ripe for conversation, <laughs> like we'd love to. We only want ripe people. <laughs> ripe people. Ripe individuals. <laughs> Interpret that however you wish. Yes. It's very cryptic. It's important that you interpret that in your own personal way. But yeah. No, like, yeah, we're, you know, we love having guests. So if you're out there and you've got something you want to talk about, you know, hit us up. It'd be cool. It'd be fun. Let's get together. Yeah. You'll live forever if you tweet us and we talk about you on the uh, It'll be You'll be immortalized on the internet. Yeah, so. I mean, what's better than that? Yeah. <laughs> Remember me. <laughs> All right, let's end this. (laughs) End this. Okay. (laughs) That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us. And like the video if you kind of just like us. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Anchor.fm, and elsewhere. You can subscribe to us there as well. And please do. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. And again, to reiterate, cryptic weird messages are fun, as long as they're not mean. Yeah, don't be, just don't be mean to anyone, please. Yeah. But especially not us. We're very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> as, you can, as you know yes, by listening to this Yes, we cry. Yes, just please be nice. Uh, on Twitter, we are at LitMeritPod, and we will update... Uh, post updates, news. We're trying to get on there more. We text- gifts. I'm obsessed with gifts yeah. on Twitter now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna we're thinking about posting more photos, oh, fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I'll be posting the vi- the pictures I took of this beautiful room we're in. Yes, of the beautiful downtown Vancouver Public Library. Thank you, Vancouver Public Library. FBRL for, <laughs> for Vancouver Regional Library. We love you. Thank you for giving us space. Uh, And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no No guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.